So it was a rare meeting between two automated driverless cars in California, and it almost ended in a crash. So joining us now to discuss the safety, the future of driverless cars, Kevin Navapur. He's the Senior Vice President of Content Strategies at Allison and Partners. So Kevin, even though it was avoided, it yes. was a near miss, it's still an incident, and it's still something that we have to talk about. What exactly happened and why is it important? Well, you saw two cars that were propelled by driverless, uh, two driverless cars um, operating on the highway right now on, on their own. And you had this sort of near miss, so autom automatically it starts you know, scaring people that there's going to be a potential here that once this starts to become a, a, a thing that we start seeing more often on the roads, that accidents are going to start coming out of nowhere and start to sort of be on the daily news on, an, on a on a frequent basis, but the fact is, is that this plays better as a headline than it does an actual warning for consumers. The instances of, you know, you haven't really seen many, many accidents in this category. Google has driven a million miles on the road so far without any kind of major accidents. So I think humans are probably more at risk driving themselves and getting into an accident than an actual driverless car. So let's take the auto analogy to the <clears throat> next level here. Is this a speed bump? Is it a stall, or are we at a complete dead stop because of an incident like this when it comes to driverless car technology? I don't even know if it's a speed bump, really. I just think it's one of these moments where it's it, we ramp it up to make it mean something more than it actually is. Um, the fact is, is like we're getting into the internet of cars today. Um, you know, automakers are looking at creating essentially big, large computers on the road, and I think consumers are getting more and more comfortable with this as a prospect. I mean, look at cruise control, look at automatic parking, look at lane warnings, look at blind spot detection. These are all automobile intelligence features that people are getting really excited about. Um, a lot of automakers are actually promoting Wi-Fi in their cars right now. So this is going to be a concept that I think people are going to get more and more comfortable with, and I think an incident like this isn't going to really you know, take people off of that track. That list that you just rattled <clears throat> off right there is a list of variables, things that can all affect the drive, the, the experience overall. Mm -hmm. Another variable, the road itself. Right. Why? Well, the road itself is also more indicative, I think, not just the infrastructure bit of it, but, but the drivers out there. So in about 20, you know, by 2030, we're going to get about 90% of Americans, of the 70 million Americans, 65 and older, are going to be on the road. So that's a very aged population on the road with a driver's license, and there's some risks there. You also have distracted driving at almost an you know, unprecedented level right now. People are taking selfies while they're driving. It's not just texting. It's not just eating. It's also not just on the phone. So I think humans probably pose a greater risk to other humans on the road than a driverless car does. So I think those are the factors that a driverless car technology can actually try to mitigate when it comes to safety. This is an ecosystem that's obviously in its infancy right now, but there are a number of different companies trying to get into it. Google, a mm -hmm. big tech company, a large tech company, Mercedes on the car maker side. Lexus. You've got Lexus, Delphi, which makes the equipment that goes into it. NVIDIA is a computer chip maker. They are starting to kind of toy with these technologies. Is there a sense early on right now about who really kind of gets that supremacy or that edge, the first mover type thing in this environment in your mind right now? Well, I'm, I'm anxious with, with Google more than anybody else, I think, just because I think they've committed to this on a very, very like strategic level. They've, they've, dri they've put the cars out there. They've experimented with automakers like Lexus and Toyota. They've been on the road for a million miles. They've recruited um, consumer opinion on a frequent basis. They have different technologies, different cars. Their Panda car in, in San Francisco is something that only goes 25 miles an hour. So they've experimented in a, such a prolific way in this that I, I think they're, they're the leader. They're the ones that are going to dictate sort of where we start seeing um, you know, how this evolves as a storyline for most people, but also as a technology for most people. And then you're going to see all these different players play a role with regards to a specific technology that they offer, a chip, a, a specific element that, that's going to create a better experience, a safer experience, a more dynamic experience. And that's going to be more interesting to follow as time goes on. So it sounds like it's too early to call a winner in this race just yet. Kevin, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Kevin Nabaport, he's the Senior Vice President of Content and Strategies over at Allison and Partners. And thanks for watching. I'm Dominic Chu. Hey, YouTube fans. I'm Landon Downey from CNBC. Thanks so much for checking out our channel. Here you'll find videos packed with all the info that you need to be smarter about your finances. Be sure and subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me to see CNBC's original series, Young Money, Tech Bet, Kramer's Mad Money, and all the latest from CNBC.